Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In April of this year, China implemented a new round of export controls on rare earths and their raw materials, strictly restricting military-focused companies from purchasing finished rare earth minerals from Chinese companies. Amidst the unsuccessful rounds of tariff negotiations between China and the U.S., the U.S. has again been stirring up trouble over tariffs on China, with Trump recently announcing a 100% tariff on China effective November 1. This move has triggered responses from relevant domestic authorities, further tightening export controls on rare earths. This has created unexpected challenges for countries like the U.S. and Europe. According to sources familiar with the matter, the shipment date of ASML's next-generation NAEUV lithography machines may be significantly delayed. According to an authoritative report by Xinhua News Agency, China's new regulations on rare earths clearly stipulate that export applications for the end use of the research, development, and production of 14 nanometers and below logic chips, or 256 layer and above memory chips, will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. More crucially, items listed in Part 1 will be subject to controls if they account for 0.1% or more of the value of items listed in Part 2 of Annex 1 manufactured overseas. To put it bluntly, this 0.1% rare earth content determines whether the US and the West can successfully produce advanced semiconductors and military equipment. Just as salt is a tiny but indispensable component of our diet, rare earths, while accounting for only a tiny fraction of the total value of high-end equipment like lithography machines, are crucial to the successful production of these products. According to Reuters, ASML's most advanced EUV lithography machines utilize a significant amount of rare earth permanent magnets, such as neodymium iron boron, in their internal magnet systems. While these materials account for less than 0.5% of the market value, their absence would lead to a drastic drop in overall machine performance. This means that China's current round of controls on rare earths and other key raw materials will further counter a series of unfair U.S. measures against China. U. The U.S. has long used national security as a pretext to restrict technology exports to China. Now, China is retaliating with the same logic by adding rare earths, a dual-use material, to its controls. The European Commission's urgent statement's plea for China to become a reliable partner is particularly ironic when the West banned the export of lithography machines to China. Did it ever consider reliability? Why could a mere 0.1% of rare earth elements trigger such a massive earthquake? The key lies in the irreplaceable nature of rare earth elements in high-end manufacturing. According to the authoritative industry media outlet, China Non-Ferrous Metals News, the production of an F-35 fighter jet requires 400 kilograms of rare earth materials. The precision magnetic levitation system in ASML's lithography machines in the Netherlands relies on samarium cobalt permanent magnets whose performance directly determines the accuracy of lithography. Sugar is delicious, but not eating it is fine. Not eating salt can kill you, this industry jargon reveals the true importance of rare earths. In semiconductor manufacturing, while rare earth elements don't directly constitute the core of the chip, they are widely used in lithography equipment, wafer polishing materials, plasma etching equipment, and other applications. It can be said that without China's supply of medium and heavy rare earths, the operation of the global chip industry chain would be affected. It's just that China had previously refrained from using this Trump card. Therefore, when China did use it, even Trump himself was surprised by the decision of the relevant domestic authorities. According to the latest industry reports, over 90% of the world's heavy rare earth refining capacity is concentrated in China. Data from the U.S. Geological Survey, 
USGS, confirms that China controls 70% of global rare earth mining and nearly 100% of separation and refining technology. When the West attempted to bypass China and establish alternative supply chains, they faced a harsh reality, Australia's Liners Corporation could only provide light rare earths, and the refining process still required shipment to China. When ASML announced that some lithography machine deliveries would be delayed due to rare earth supply chain issues, the West finally tasted the bitter fruit of its own actions. The Dutch newspaper Financial Daily quoted an ASML insider as saying, we didn't expect China to regulate so precisely as the 0.1% threshold. Now every piece of equipment needs to be reassessed for rare earth content. The EU's response was rife with hypocrisy. The European Commission's official statement called on China to ensure a stable supply of critical raw materials, yet just last year, the EU passed the Critical Raw Materials Directive, restricting graphite exports to China. This approach makes the call for a reliable partner seem pale and laughable. I believe that this rare earth control is no impromptu decision, but rather China's precise leverage strategy in the chip war, achieving maximum strategic impact at minimal cost. Unlike a complete supply cut, the precise 0.1% threshold avoids excessively impacting domestic exports while directly targeting weak spots in Western supply chains. Furthermore, Shenzhen Development and Reform Commission Director Guo Ziping confirmed at a press conference that domestic semiconductor equipment company New Glory will bring unexpected surprises at the Shenzhen Semiconductor Exhibition in October, suggesting that China has the confidence to turn the table. In the short term, the delay in ASML's lithography machine deliveries is just the beginning. In the long term, this salt versus sugar struggle will force all parties to reconsider. In an era of receding technological globalization, true strategic security lies not in absolute control, but in building a more resilient innovation ecosystem. As the surprises foreseen at the Shenzhen Semiconductor Exhibition suggest, Future victories will ultimately come down to who can achieve true self-sufficiency in basic innovation. When salt becomes a strategic weapon, perhaps we can truly understand, in this era of interdependent globalization, no country can completely decouple from or exercise its power over others, especially major powers like China and the United States. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.